Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I am joined today by my co-host Wiggle. We'll see how long she wants to participate in this. She'll probably be splitting time between here and the corner across the gear room. But I just wanted to take some time today to share my top five tips hacks, tricks, whatever you want to call it for backpacking during pregnancy. Before we dive into everything, quick disclaimer, nothing shared here is meant to be taken as medical advice. Everyone is different. Every pregnancy is different. We all have our own fitness levels and risk factors. So I'm just speaking from my personal experience and sharing what worked for me. If you do have any questions as to whether or not hiking and backpacking is an appropriate activity for you during pregnancy, just make sure you run it by your midwife or whoever your healthcare provider is first. Don't just go off of what some girl on YouTube or a blog has to say. One more thing I promise, then we will get started. You'll definitely want to check out the two blog posts I wrote, must haves for backpacking during pregnancy and what I wore hiking during pregnancy. We're briefly gonna talk about a little of both of those topics today, but if you want even more, then definitely go check those out. This video just like scratches the surface. The links will be in the description. Okay, now let's get started. The biggest question when it comes to hiking and backpacking during pregnancy is, can you? And the short answer is yes. The general consensus is whatever you did for physical activity and exercise pre-pregnancy, it's pretty much safe to continue doing with modifications and definitely it's cliche advice but listen to your body it is so true if something feels wrong doesn't feel right then stop uh i know you hear that everywhere but it is tried and true advice i certainly had no intention of giving up on outdoor activity while i was pregnant it was a goal of mine to stay active as long as i could and so I was still hiking and backpacking in some capacity up until 34 and a half weeks. She was born at 38 on the dot. And I don't want to mislead you into thinking I was knocking out these like 10 and 12 mile days by that point. That was not the case. My mileage was significantly reduced, which that's a convenient segue. It brings us to the first of five tips I want to share with you for hiking and backpacking in the second and third trimester. We're not talking about the first trimester. That is a whole different animal and I have a whole other video addressing that. So number one, reducing mileage. Everyone's limitations are different, of course. I was never the type to knock out 20 mile days beforehand. I'm more comfortable in that 10 to 12 a day range, which I think is pretty average. But when I was able to hike again in the second trimester, I found that my daily mileage limit was cut about in half. And just like that, my co-host has lost interest already. That's okay. I think we might be able to manage without her input in the conversation. So like I mentioned, my mileage beforehand in a day was around 10 and by my second trimester when I was able to hike again it was about six so a little over half and that's due to a number of factors so some muscle atrophy from the first trimester not being able to be as active and just all of the fatigue that came with that as well as new bodily changes between extra weight on my body and hormones, just all of those changes. So our section hike from Max Patch to Hot Springs was kind of the trial and error trip that really guided a lot of my decision making going forward in terms of just planning trips and realizing my new limits. So after being sidelined for pretty much four and a <laughs> half months, I was finally able to get back on the trail again. And in that trip, we were doing like eight and nine mile days, which previously would have been comfortable for me. But by 24 weeks, that proved to be 
way more than I could handle. So I quickly realized going forward, I would have to significantly reduce my mileage. So I took a couple more trips where I was doing like five, six and a half miles in a day. And that seemed to be the sweet spot. I wasn't having any aches, pains, injuries. That was my new limit. Of course, my mileage did continue to reduce throughout pregnancy. By the middle and end of the third trimester, I was only backpacking like two or three miles max in a day. Some trips, I only hiked one mile in a day. Day hiking, I could hike like five miles, but wearing a fully loaded pack, it was really between one and three. And it just depended on where I was going, the terrain. But by that end point, I was not still hiking like six, seven, eight mile days. <laughs> I'm sorry, she is just cracking me up over there. Um, number two, reduce pack weight. This is another obvious one, but it really sets you up for success or failure before you even reach the trailhead. So my pack, the Osprey Levity, is considered an ultralight pack, and its own limit is 25 pounds. It's not really capable of handling like a 30 or 40 pound load, but that kind of works out for me because I'm not really comfortable carrying more than 25 pounds. I tend to have injuries when I try to go past that limit, and so Ordinarily, my pack weight is anywhere between 22 and 25 pounds. So during pregnancy, I tried to reduce it further and not exceed 20 pounds. It definitely helped when I had Jordan and the dogs along on a trip. I could give them some extra gear and really distribute some of the load between them. But that's not to say I wasn't able to stick to this limit on solo trips as well. There were exceptions with like water carries, but I made sure that in planning my routes, I would not be uh, on trails in which I would have to do large water carries for long distances. And along those lines, I also made sure that wherever I was stopping to camp, there was a water source, if not right next to camp, then within a mile. So that if I did have to carry my water in, like I said, it would not be for a long distance. And just like with reducing my mileage, when I reduced my pack weight and stuck to that new limit, I was able to avoid injuries and make sure that I was comfortable on the trail. Number three is an absolute game changer, and it's one of these. So this is something you put across your seatbelt in the car to keep it from rubbing against your neck and your chest and causing discomfort but it also does a great job of acting like a cushion around your hip belt strap and buckle. Now, I can't take credit for this one. I actually found out about this hack from another female backpacker reading her blog, and so I will put the links to her blog and all of that in the description. Um, I found out about it reading one of her trail journals from a trip she took in her third trimester in which she shared that she put one of these little seat belt cushions around her hip belt to prevent any discomfort and I just thought that was genius so I tried it too and yeah it works it is a game changer I was able to continue wearing my hip belt for the entire time that I was backpacking we good over there yeah, we're good. We're just excited. A lot of women uh, have discomfort either because of the buckle digging in or there's not enough strap length and so it's too tight. That was never the case for me. I had enough strap length with my hip belt to continue clipping it underneath my belly comfortably. Um, but as far as the buckle, this really helped to prevent it from digging or pinching or feeling any kind of discomfort. Like I barely felt the hip belt, didn't even know it was there most of the time. And I largely attribute it to this little bit of padding. It's such a simple thing, but it is such a neat little solution for a pretty big problem for moms to be who are backpacking. Number four is men's shirts. Yes, you heard me right. Um, men's shirts were like predominantly what I wore for hiking tops. 
I tried wearing um, like maternity specific athletic tops and just was not happy with them. The material just was not really up to the task of outdoor activity, whether it was because of like moisture wicking, just not being sufficient there or not being durable enough when you're on the trail and brushing up against like branches and rocks and just obstacles out there. So I was not very satisfied with the options that were maternity specific clothes. I also tried going up one size in the clothes I would hike in pre-pregnancy, but it was just loose and baggy in all the wrong places and still not long enough to cover my belly. So I decided to give menswear a try specifically merino wool and merino polyester blend shirts because men's shirts have a longer torso which would provide the length I needed to cover my belly and are a little bit broader in the chest so it would give me a little bit more room there when measurements change during pregnancy and also men's shirts have a higher neckline which I just appreciate for modesty's sake. So having men's shirts as a part of both my hiking and camping wardrobe was a super helpful trick, I guess. It provided a fit that matched my new measurements during pregnancy, but also I knew that the material was going to be able to stand up to the demands of the outdoors. With merino wool and um, wool blend shirts. I was going to have the moisture wicking and anti-odor properties, just all of those same features I was used to with my pre-pregnancy clothes. But like I said, it now fits uh, the changes that my body has gone through. So men's shirts were, I guess you'd say another game changer. Number five, this is the big one for sleep, and that is an inflatable sit pad. The one I used in particular is the Perea Outdoors Recharge Pad. So as pregnancy goes on, sleeping gets a lot tougher and that largely has to do with the frequent bathroom breaks during the night, but also because of just aches and pains from your sleeping position and whatnot. So when I was at home, I would sleep on my side and put a pillow between my knees. Obviously, when I'm on the trail, I'm not going to strap a big fluffy pillow to the back of my pack. So I took out my Perea Outdoors uh, Recharge Pad and I would sleep on my side and place that between my knees. And it really helped to take the pressure off of my knees, my hips, just those weight bearing joints. And if I was changing positions and I wanted to lay on my back, which I know they say you shouldn't do, but after a while, like my shoulder was cramping up so bad, I had to lay on my back for just a little bit. Um, I would put the pillow underneath my knees before changing positions to my other side. And so it really helped to take the pressure off of those like weight bearing joints, my hips, my knees, all of that and made sleeping a whole lot more comfortable. So along these lines, I also started in the end of the third trimester putting a pillow under my belly when I slept on my side at home. And I didn't really feel like bringing a second inflatable pillow on the trail with me. So what I would do is take my quilt and bunch it up under the side of my belly to kind of give support and it worked pretty well. It worked just as well as if I had like a pillow there. So putting one of these between my knees and then later on in pregnancy, kind of bunching up my quilt to support my belly really helped me get better sleep. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful and encouraging. If you do have any questions about backpacking during pregnancy, please drop those in the comments. I'd love to do a follow-up video kind of answering those questions. If you have questions about backpacking with a baby, please drop those in the comments too. And that will sort of guide uh, what kind of advice and tips yeah, I can like offer. Oh, calm down. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could
Well, maybe just don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.